When I told friends of mine that I was going to meet this gentleman here this evening, uh, they just kind of shook their heads and said the same thing I did. It's unbelievable. Um, because he's not just one of the greats of our time, he's one of the greats of any time. I took a moment upstairs in the hotel room and just jotted down off the top of my head some of his albums that I owned that I, just, just, that I could remember. Backstreet, uh, A Change of Heart, Up Front, Songs from the Night Before, uh, As We Speak, Here and Gone, Only Everything. And those are just the ones that I can remember. There are others that I have at home and that I treasure. He is a six-time Grammy Award winner, and his name is David Sanborn, perhaps one of the greatest saxophone players of all time. He's an artist whose music spans the genres of rock and roll, R&B, pop, and jazz, a naturally gifted performer who has helped define the saxophone's modern sound while also influencing several generations. His career reads like a who's who of musical legends. He played Woodstock. He has toured with Stevie Wonder. He has rocked with my favorite guys, the Rolling Stones. Toured with David Bowie, performing his famous solo on Bowie's 1975 hit, Young Americans. Moved on to movie soundtracks, solo albums, multiple Grammy Awards. Many of you know that he's also been committed to actively speak out about polio to help raise awareness about the need for vaccinations and the drive to wipe out polio around the world. Last year, he united with, another, with other renowned artists for Rotary International's End Polio Now music compilation CD to raise funds and awareness. And he's lent his voice to other global awareness campaigns and is featured in a PSA series called This Close that promotes vaccination and global polio eradication efforts. And he also very generously shares his own personal story. For his work in bringing worldwide attention to the debilitating effects of polio, we present the 75th anniversary award to the great David Sanborn. Probably never had your picture taken. <laughs> it's so quiet, it's so quiet in here. <laughs> I was telling Greg after an intro like that, I should just shut up. <laughs> I um, I just want to share a brief personal story with you. I. Uh, I got polio in 1948. I was three years old. And uh, I remember playing in the yard and kind of collapsing. And the next thing I knew, I was in an iron lung. And I was in an iron lung for almost a year and paralyzed for quite a while after that. And uh, I kind of had all three kinds of polio, bulbar, lumbar, and transverse, kind of the uh, polio trifecta, I guess. And. Uh, when I got out of the hospital, uh, well, when I was in the hospital, uh, you know, as you can imagine, my parents were just absolutely devastated because in 1948 there was uh, quite a stigma attached to the to the polio, and uh, so none of the kids were allowed to play in our yard. And even after I got out of the hospital, you know, we were pretty much isolated. And so, in addition to all the you know heartbreak and guilt that my parents felt, there was this. Uh, sense of isolation and uh, not knowing where to turn, my father, you know, uh, turned to the March of Dimes and, and just found, you know, more than anything else, a sense of hope and a, and a sense that, that they weren't alone. And uh, through the March of Dimes, he got a chance to meet Jonas Salk, and who was a hero in our house. Uh, you know, the pictures on our wall were, there was the Pope, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, Frank Sinatra, <laughs> uh, 
and Jonas Salk. And uh, I, I remember also that when, when I got out of the hospital, my, my mother, who was a, a tough, as she described herself, a tough broad, she was about 5'2", and uh, we had, uh, uh, my father was in the, in the Second World War, and we, they, they used to go down to uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, you know, in the winter times. And so when I got out of the hospital, uh, they took me down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, act, no, no, to uh, uh, St. Petersburg. And uh, every day, my five foot two inch mother would carry me into the water and float me on top of the salt water and exercise my limbs. And I think through that and through other physical therapy, uh, I was able to regain the use of my limbs. And uh, ironically, I took up the saxophone as therapy, as breathing therapy for, uh, for the condition. And here we are. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> And th that sense that uh, I was never, my parents never let me feel like a victim. They said, you know, this is the hand you're dealt, and find a way around your problems, and make the best of it. And that stuck with me, and, uh, you know, I had, uh, I had great role models, and, uh, and, uh, and I just want to thank the March of Dimes for giving my parents a sense of hope, and, and uh, a sense of not being so isolated, and uh, not feeling alone. And it gave my father a purpose, and he got involved in, he, he ran an advertising company in St. Louis, and he got involved in some local advertising for the March of Dimes, and we were, my family was actively involved in the March of Dimes throughout my life, so I, I thank everyone involved with, with the organization so much for everything that they've done for me. And I, wanna, I feel flattered and honored to be among these great honorees tonight. So before I go, I wanna, pay a little tribute to my mother who, and when she, as she was carrying me into the water, you know, struggling with this, you know, kid that was almost as tall as her, you know, other people would kind of look at her with a little odd and she would say, you know, go mind your own business, but she used rather more colorful language. <laughs> and I, I, I can't even approach it, so I'm not gonna try. But my mother who passed away this year, uh, she always used to sing me this song, and uh, I just want to do just a, just a little brief excerpt from it now. It's called uh, Someone to Watch Over Me. <laughs> 